and made for the NA and B's. And you get this beautifully welded. I mean, it's really, considering the price of this unit, there'll be a link, link down below. Uh, considering the price of this unit, actually, surprisingly not to be done. Uh, all nicely sealed and wrapped. Not the other that quite yet. We should get some components in there too. Plenty of good wrapping. That's just quite cool. It's like it's been folded inside out so people don't know what it is. Um, so, game ship on the brown side. Outside label, pretty cool. Very nice looking kit. Uh, in the bag, hopefully, we should have some wires in a nice bit of heat shrink. That's really cool. Already done, so we can extend our current fittings. So, maybe some soldering involved. A piece of rubber. And this is still on the bottom of the tank. So it's going to sit in the engine bay. Some blue clips, some red clips. They're excited, no idea yet. A little copper blades, a more connector, more connectors, more connectors, more cable guides, tube guides, help keep everything in the control in the engine bay. I like that. Uh, another connector, grommet. That's all well and good. I'm gonna just keep that rubber strip out separately. M10 nut washers and a larger bolt and again washers and grommets as needed. So it all looks complete as per the time. What's to see an install guide? So first job, I'm going to take out the old uh, washer bottle and pull the pipe back. So first thing, now unfortunately I've been pretty effective. I've been pretty efficient recently and kept the fluid topped up. That'll be a bit of a pain, but we'll deal with that. So two terminal nuts and then the whole unit should slide right up. Out with these, I'm going to keep them somewhere that you can forget later. Um, I normally find the bumper cells are the perfect place. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, thankfully the wires just pop straight off, but that's, that's a connector, should just drop away. And the pipe in disappears up through there. So when we remove this, all the fluid is going to want to escape. So get a container ready. Right, that's what we're going to be shortening it anyway. So once you've poured it all over the engine bay, that should keep it nice and clean. Um, once you've got a little bit out, you can close it all back up again and move it somewhere safe to actually really empty it. Never a good idea to let fluid sit in your engine bay. Any double fluid will just get confusing later. While we're still down there, seems like a time to pull back, pull through any cables, tube it. Ideally, when you do, fluid will go everywhere. It's all part of the excitement of doing DIY projects. Next step, we need to get the pump out and put it into our new unit. How hard can that be? OK, 
Okay, turns out screwdriver from the top, further forward, should all come apart, and your grommet should hopefully. This is a pretty new grommet, so it's still nice and soft. You may need a new one of these. Uh, all comes together nicely. Okay. So, on this end, should have a little position for the grommet and pump. Should. Let's see if I work out the best way to do this. Probably grommet first. As there's a small kind of indent around there, which we want the grommet's little ridge to pop into. Right. Squish that down. Squish that, make sure it's in position. Then, like a little dream, pump should go in. Still squeezed into place. So a while ago, when I first started thinking about this project, I thought it'd be a good idea to swap out these existing models, which are a not very good, and b a little bit brittle. Those are nice shiny new ones. So I also ordered a four-piece nozzle hose kit. Extra adapters in case we need them. Spec pump in case we need that. And some nozzles. These are from Ford and supposedly do an excellent job in the Miata. So we'll be swapping these out at the same time. Now let it be known, I hate working on these. Everything down here is a little bit brittle and a little bit leaky. So we are fully fixing that. Be careful with these little clips. They should just allow the pipe to be popped out. But they are brittle, so you don't want to break them. Okay, so these washer jets have got squeezy clips holding them in place. Uh, you're coming under here where it will deflect into this wire clip. Uh, this wire connector and that's how we'll deflect the water between the two two wipers. So I'd like to fix this up a little up there if I can. We're going to be extremely loose. I don't like that. Okay, so with these in place, I was lucky as I pros out one of these clips uh, so I could reuse it down here. Uh, should help get things. So, that's 
the rubber strip finally to the bottom of the tank. To all the instructions. And then start looking at positioning. Now there should be bolts and bolt holes in the right place. So on this side we've got a hole ready for a bolt and on this side there is currently a bracket for the brake line. Go out of the way. So there is a captive nut on the other side of this. So I'm not sure what to expect when I actually going to do this. <coughs> Washer, washer on this M M8, I think, with a hex head. Okay, and that leaves a lot of thread on the other side. Make sure that's up to time. Let's see if the pattern's on the other side. So the cable comes pre-sheathed with heat shrink, but not shrunk, and that's fine. So in this case, I'm using the heat gun. Okay, one hot snake. Go pull some cable. It's quite a long, quite a long journey with this cable, so we want to be as efficient as we can. Um, I'm going to use the washer jet hole down here. I'll put through there. Now there is a grommet in the kit. It's good because it makes it five times harder than it would be otherwise. So enjoy doing that. That worked. With the cable pulled through, you can grommet in place. Uh, you can free up as much of the so you can see cable run for the old, old position for the pump. I want to get that close to the where my cable's going to be coming from as I can. This turns out going to get actually getting shorter than that. So I'll re cable tie that. <laughs> so let's strip out the cable. Okay, these little male connectors. If you do a stupid job, you might as well do it properly. When we look and 
inside the plug that's on the car. This is a Miata 1993 N8. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. Okay, uh, I'm holding it across. The one that's in the vertical position like this is the negative, okay? Check continuity to Earth just to confirm. But that one's gonna be our negative rail. So at least here's one thing we've worked out. So for obvious reasons, you don't want to solder directly on the car. If we can avoid it. Breathe those fumes in either. Okay, so we're at the point of the show where I have to remember, remind everyone to be good to one another. Very important. Makes a big difference. So, little well, connectors. I'm going to tin them up first of all. So that basically means get a little bit of solder onto the actual uh, the plates themselves. Easiest place to solder on. Having a wobbly surface it does help keep these things exciting. That okay, so all that's done, just apply a little bit of solder to there. Okay, now we're going to sort of tin up the wires, the same thing on the wires, put a bit of solder on them. Then we're going to heat them both up and they should sink into each other and make an amazing connection. And then we'll get some little pliers and we shall crimp them all together. Okay, so hopefully no specialized crimping tools required, just some little mini pliers and a soldering iron and some solder. Not that bad. Okay, so you'll notice that the, uh, the blades themselves have like two sections to, to crimp down. The, the, long, the top section is to hold the wire and the um, insulation on the wire. There's a subreddit for this. Terrible soldering on YouTube. So you can probably make this work without soldering. <laughs> so I prefer a bad solder over a bad crisp. <laughs> Fun me out of fact. Down here is a hole that takes you inside the wing from wing to the car. What that means for us doing this job is make sure you don't knock anything down there or you have to start taking bits of the wing off in order to kind of clear that out. That includes the connector that goes on the end of these wires. So, I hope you've all learned your lesson and we don't have to go through that again. Good news is if you do do it, I managed to get it back out again. You at least can clear out some leaves and stuff while you're in there. Okay, so now we've got our connector back. We're going to work out which blade goes in which side. And as we should remember, the vertical one is going to be our negative. But again, this could change from year to year, I'm not sure. So do double check. And then once your connector's on, you should just be able to connect everything together. Looks like a mirror image of what I actually want. 
It's definitely not the other one, so we're in the red we're in the red ball box. Okay, so this can eat uh, this mouth. They're definitely not quite the right breed as you, you'll see when you get them. Yeah. The angles are off, the, the blades are almost like 180 degrees out of, not twisted, just the laterally shifted. The difficulty is you do want the clip to engage. To ensure that you get a sustained good connection and there it is. So first of all, we're going to double check that we've got continuity from what we presumed was the negative to ground, which we have. Then we'll just check the positive, which it runs to each other. Okay, so we've got a connection and it's in place. Okay, and then we have to return our torture device back into position with all our cables, i.e. the grommet goes back into position. Next up, we need to make sure on our cable, all the way down the length, and again we want to be absolutely sure that we are nowhere near, we're far away from the uh, moving parts of the windscreen washer as possible. The first spot cleaned up, just here, just just above where the wipe motor is, so hopefully that will be the strongest point to prevent any droop. Apply pressure for about 10 seconds. Clean it. Dry it, then stick it. Run down light, and obviously things start to get a little bit awkward. <coughs> and the last, it's always, it's always a detail. So, from what I can work out is the connectors aren't quite right. There's just the wrong alignment they're close really close but just not quite right so it does mean that these final pins are proving a little difficult but that they will fit so you win some you lose some Cable goes underneath the tank and then finish the last tube one. As always, we're going to cut it a little bit long. We don't want to have to do this. run that all looks pretty tidy like it's going to stay in place so I'm quite happy with the overall run have a couple more bolts to do and do firewall bolt nut rubber washer and then I'm going to try and position it Make sure the rubber washer is still on the other end. It is. Make sure we don't squeeze any cables between anything. Cable still runs underneath. Small bolt first on the M M8 washer bolt. Sorry, nut. Finger tight. Let me finish off with a larger one, washer. 
and I'm not gonna put that on yet, I need to find out what size it is. And then 15 mil. No, on the back of here. So I just wanna make sure everything's in position well. You're not 15 on this side. That keeps things interesting. Your faithful comes out. Okay, I swear when I moved it a second ago, it was a 15. Tighten this. I think that's a 10 or an 11 on the other side. Okay, so that's pretty tidy in there. Okay, next up is a test. I'm going to turn on the ignition and see if I can pretend to squirt water. Okay. <laughs> that noise tells us it thinks it's connected. This is a beautiful bit of machined metal. So let's top it up. Okay, so for the fill-up, always a good idea to have a funnel. Here's a Rainex washer fluid. Always going to keep those off. have stopped. Just beneath the seat, yeah. The top, the final test. It's good in there. Don't forget we've got new washer jets too, so you'll get the exciting view. Should be really good. Love it. So, Circuit Sports uh, washer fluid tank instructions. Pretty good. Yeah, there's not a lot to it anyway. So they did a great job. Uh, kit, pretty fantastic. A little bit annoying about the uh, the connectors, but they've probably got a lot of different years to try and contend with and it could be my car that's different rather than their kit being wrong overall thing looked pretty looks pretty good we'll have a look in the daylight tomorrow but apart from that thanks and remember be good to one another